Hey guys, and welcome to this tutorial on how to set up the PMDG 737 from cold and dark to a ready to taxi state. So basically, I've had a few guys ask me in the past, how do you turn on the aircraft, how do you know the checklist off by heart, what do you do turn it on? So basically I decided to start this video, and in it I'll go through each step, one by one, and basically explain what I'm doing as I'm going through it. So I'll do it nice and slow for you guys, hopefully you guys can understand, and for those with the PMDG 737 or thinking about getting it themselves, then I hope this video is there to help you on how to get the aircraft ready to go. So without further ado, actually for that I'll go through the hypothetical situation as well. So we are at Stansted Airport as Ryanair and I've got a flight plan as well set up. Echo Golf Sierra Sierra Stansted to Echo Papa Romeo Zulu Jeshuf. It's like a hypothetical situation basically so I can set up the FMC as a route as well. So without further ado, go into the virtual cockpit and start setting up the aircraft. So go to the OFED panel, first thing you want to do is on the emergency lights and the battery. So there are two switches up above, you've got the um, DC bat, the battery, and they've got the emergency light switch here. So close both hat switches, which will bring power and lighting into the aircraft. And that basically brings power to the lighter surfaces of the aircraft, so you've got the um, sole FMC here, you've got a few overhead panel stuff as well. So basically there are two main things you need to set up in the aircraft. The FMC, which basically you can put in your like, nav data, your destination, that kind of stuff. And they've got the overhead panel itself, so they've got the um, engines, fuel pumps, basically all that kind of stuff we need to do up here. So both of them are done separately, and we'll go bo through both of them in this video. So first thing first, we'll set up the FMC. But before we can do that, actually I'll make that bigger for you guys so you can see what I'm doing. You want to go to FS Actions and set up the fuel and payload. So in this case... Um, Basically, I have the flight plan over here. I got it off of Simbrief, which is like a free online um, flight briefing um, program. So basically, it gives you like your fuel numbers, your calculation, that kind of stuff. So well, hypothetically, we should go for 12,000 kilos of fuel, and we'll return that. Go for payload. So if you're using like um, virtual airline or like some sort of passenger program, basically you can just input your um, passenger numbers and cargo, bring a bit of that extra readers into the system. So say 97 passengers. Uh, 250 in the front, 700 in the back. Now return out and go to ground connections. And you want to turn on the ground power and connect to the GPU. That's important since the APU is shut off and we do need to set up the aircraft. So make sure ground power is connected. Head back into menu and close that for now. Head back to the overhead panel and the ground power available light has now come on. Click on. And I'll bring um, power into the aircraft via the GPU, which is the small box on the front of the aircraft, just to the left. So that's po providing power now into the aircraft. So first thing you want to do is now set up the um, FMC and get the aircraft sorted. So shift free lets you pull out the um, FMC. So you click on FMC and go to position in initialization, and basically now going to tell the aircraft where it is. So go to the overhead panel. And go to the very top of it, we have these two knobs here for the IRS. Basically, the IRS is the aircraft's GPS um, system, basically tells it where it is. Turn these both to nav. Press shift 3, bring back the FMC, and put in the information. So we are at Echo Golf Sierra Sierra Stansted. We are at gate Lima 63. Though not all airports like have the information, so if it doesn't have it in the database, that's fine. And now we've got a new box that has appeared. What you want to do is copy the last position, so click on the corresponding button here, and then copy the value at the bottom, and then paste it into the RS position. So that will then activate your VFD and flight displays, as the aircraft aligns itself and figures out where it is. So next thing you want to do is go to route, set up the route. So already copied over your um, departure airport, so in this case Stansted, and our destination is Echo Papa Romeo Zulu Jeshuf. Plug that in. Now I've got company routes. There's two ways of doing it. You can actually click on the button here and basically go through page by page. Or you can do it the realistic style, which is actually typing in the um, route itself. So in this case, it's EGSSEPRZ. So I'll type that in EGSSEPRZ. Plug that in. We are flying right now, hypothetically. So we'll put in our flight code Foxtrot Romeo, just any four numbers. That'll do. Plug that in and runway. So depending on what the departure runway at the time is, we'll set that in. So we're at Stansted, we'll use runway 22. Plug that in. Activate, once you've filled in all the information. 
Then click on Execute. So you see the blue arrow has now come up. That's saying the flight plan has been loaded. Click on Execute. Line will turn, turn pink as the flight plan has been unplugged in. Next thing you'll do is now go to the perf initialization and basically this will set up the autopilot and tell the aircraft like what's its max speed and um, what's its max altitude. So the VNAV basically. So the button next to ZFW, click on that twice. It basically brings in the aircraft center gravity and like um, basic information with that. Reserves, basically depending on how much reserve you're putting in the aircraft, um, you'll put that in here. If you're using no reserves in my case, put in 0.01. Plug that in and reserves go to 0, 0.0. And cost index basically determines how efficient the engines will be running and what the max speed will be at um, cruise. So being right there, they use a cost index of 6 universally. But that could that does change airline to airline. And if you use like briefing programs, it will also give you a cost index in that as well. Next thing, we now need to set a cruising altitude. So for example, we'll go for flight level 350 for this. So if we put 350 plug that into there, basically turn out the um, VNAV, what the maximum altitude will be for this flight, and cruising winds basically turns the wind speeds in the um, cruise, so if, for example if we say there is 10 degree, ten knot winds coming from 55 degrees, we will input 0 055 slash 010, so basically tells the aircraft that at 0 055 degrees there are 10 knot winds, which we can input into here, and then click on Execute. It will then go to set up the aircraft's um, speed here. So you go, you've got your speed here in knots and then max. And then you've got your altitude here as well. The aircraft will climb to during the flight. So cruising to 350. And we are maxing at 0 0.74, 0 0.742 um, knots. So if we go back into the um, setup and click on the N1 limit, we can skip that page. Go to take off and input our flaps. So, for example, we'll use 10 degrees of flaps. Plug that in. Center gravity, click on that twice, and basically it brings in center gravity and tells your trim. So, in this case, 5.33. So, you can close that now and input 5.33 trim on the trim wheel. Move that mouse in because my control is now busted. So, 5.33. That will do. And back into the FMC. Now let's go to departure arrival. Go to departure and set a SID. So basically your SID is your um, automatic um, departure path. Basically each airport has its own like defined paths where you can leave out of the airspace. So we are on runway 22. And basically when you're contacting tower getting um, IFR clear, um, clearance, Basically, I'll give you a um, SID to go for. So in this case, we'll be using the Charlie Lima November 8 Romeo SID. We'll select that. And now you can see on the PFD, a new um, route has appeared. So what you can do is click on Execute if you're happy with it. And it'll then override the um, route and input the information you've got here. So you can now go back to Init Ref, click on Index, go to Takeoff, and input the three V numbers. So basically, um, V1, V R, um, Rotate. V2, so basically this is your, like your um, speed setup, so V1 is your point of no return, we're going too fast for um, landing, if you have to do a reject takeoff, um, rotate, when you rotate the aircraft, and V2 is when you do like your clean up gear up and that kind of stuff, so input all three, and if you look on the left, your V numbers will now appear on the top, and say once we do go reach um, 131 knots, then this will follow the um, speed on the left, so we can now close the FMC, and the aircraft is now set up and ready to go. Likewise, the co pilot one as well, you just go on FMC and stick it in legs mode. So one is in legs, the other is in takeoff. So FMC is now set up. We can now do the um, overhead panel. But first of all, we can do this as well. So in this case, um, sometimes tower will give you like clearance to like 10,000, 12,000 feet, so forth. So set an altitude. If you're clear to make it to your cruising altitude, set it to your cruising. So in this case, 350, 35,000. And IS Mac, you can have set that over to 250, basically your uh, max speed below 10,000 um, feet, or set it to your takeoff speed. So in this case, it's 132. So I'll set that to 132. And heading, we don't need to um, touch. Make sure flight direct is also turned on. Now we go to the overhead panel and start setting up the aircraft from there. So we'll go for the lower panel and zoom out so you can see the entire thing again. 
Right, so when it comes to setting up the overhead panel on the 737, we're basically following the direction going up, down, up, down. Follow it in that direction and you'll be fine when turning the aircraft on. So first thing you want to do is head over to the fuel pumps and basically turn the fuel pumps within the aircraft. That brings fuel to the auxiliary power unit, turns, brings um, fuel to the engines. Let's just turn those on. Likewise on this side, head over to the hydraulic pumps and turn on the two central hydraulics. Turn on the anti-ice just above that. And head over to the left side and make sure the yaw dampener is turned on. Basically the yaw dampener brings that resistance onto the yokes allowing the aircraft to actually control the flight surfaces raw um, yaw pitch roll which um, without it basically wouldn't be moving anything on the aircraft it'd just be a useless yoke. So make sure your dampener is turned on and also above turn on the service interphone basically as you could uh, contact the ground um, crew which is useful for stuff like um, pushback. So now that the um, basic setup is turned on Head over to the pressurization panel and set that to your cruising altitude, so in my case 35,350. And basically, um, later on when you turn on the pack switches, it will set up the um, pressurization in the aircraft to reach 35,000. Don't turn that on and well, when you reach 10,000 feet the aircraft will depressurize. It doesn't end well for you or your passengers, let me tell you. So once that's set up, head over to the APU, the startup switch, and now you can start up the APU. Likewise turn lights as well, so it's on the logo lights and see collision lights. Strobe lights you don't need to turn on until your plane is ready to go. They can turn it on at this point as well if you want to. Tax lights don't turn on until we taxi and landing lights we don't turn on until we get onto the runway itself. So start up the APU, turn it on, wait a few seconds, click on start and then the um, dial here should start moving up as the APU starts up. So the APU auxiliary power unit is a small engine in the back of the plane which powers the in-flight systems when the aircraft is on the ground. So oil pressure warning is fine, it means the engine is turning on. Likewise, my speed will press start again, just in case. And there you go, engine will now start up. So normally you only have to press it, press it once, though if you want to press it twice it shouldn't affect the um, system anyway. So power is now coming to full. It will then stabilise and fall down to about um, power of 5, so mid-level. And once it does that, the um, two APU generators to lights um, should now appear, the big blue lights here. Once you um, give it a few seconds, and after we turn the APU on, we can then disconnect the um, ground power units and get the aircraft um, ready to go. So any second now it should appear. Turn on the two central buttons there. Turn off the ground power to enable the um, make sure the power is in the aircraft. And now press Shift Free. Go back to Menu. Go to FS Actions, Ground Connections, and you can get rid of the ground power unit. Although at this point you could probably get rid of everything now. So Get rid of everything and just make sure you're back on the um, legs or takeoff page depending on what you're doing. So you can also turn on the strobe lights at this point as well. APU is on and now you want to make sure the um, rest of the aircraft is ready to go. So at this point we'll then start our pushback and turn on both engines. So we go back to our normal virtual cockpit view. We can turn off the warning lights, that's fine. So we don't need a marsh caution anymore. Flights have been set up over the panel has been set up so if we go to shift 3 go to menu FS actions if you're on like that sim or so forth you'd um, get your like clearance to taxi or so forth click on ground connect not ground connection sorry you want to go to push back uh, we want to go straight zero but I want to turn our nose 90 degrees to the right click on start and then the um, gr you'll be starting your communication with the ground you'll then push back your aircraft ready to go so push back um, parking brakes has not been set, make sure it's set as well at this point. We'll then tell you to disconnect your parking brakes. Parking brake released. And then the, um, so it's now been cleared to push and start. The pushback target in front of us will then start coming towards us. And so at this point we'll then start up our um, engine to there we go, so head over back to the overhead panel and then it's these two MSUS down here turn on engine 2 first as will be the one away from terminal and engine 2 always turns on as um, FAA standards head down to the panel down here and we're now waiting for this number to reach 20, basically it's the engine heating up once we reach 20 we'll start the fuel flow which will ignite the engine and start it up so there we go, head over to the um, fuel cutoff um, valve and set that to idle. 
Engine 2 is now starting up. Once the low oil pressure sign comes off, we can turn off the um, engine starter. There we go. So we can now turn that off and do the same for engine 1. Turn that on. So watch for the engine to reach 20. go 17 18 19 20 start the fuel flow and engine one will now start up so once low pressure oil um, lights come off we can turn off the starter and get the aircraft set up and ready to taxi there we go so engine one starter off we can now bring power to the aircraft to turn on the left and far right um, switches. We can then turn off the APU, so we do not need it anymore. We've now finished pushback, so ground will tell me to set parking brake. He will now leave, so we can now set up our aircraft as well. So pack switches come on, which will start up the pressurization in, in the aircraft. Lower the flaps to takeoffs. In my case, I set it to 10 degrees, so we'll lower it four times. Trim was set for takeoff. And well, once we have our takeoff clearance from the tower, we turn on the taxi lights. And aircraft at this point will now be ready to go. So look forward, increase the throttle to about 30%. Or well, before we do that, even, go over to the TCAS panel in the back. Turn this dial all the way to the right and press test. Basically, TCAS is your um, aircraft collision avoidance system. Once you whenever an aircraft gets too close to you. So, dials will go red. It'll give you a TCAS test. That'll turn on. There you go. Make sure your parking brake is off. And then increase your throttle to 30%. And then you'll be able to taxi to the runway. Give or take um, a few notches, depending on the... Um, ground surface where you're taxiing and so forth but other than that that is how you turn on the PMDG 737 from Colin Dark to a ready to taxi state so I hope you found this tutorial helpful if you did definitely do leave a like if you didn't find anything helpful like a few issues here and there give me that down in the comments on what you need to know and I'm more than happy to try and help you out but other than that I hope you guys enjoyed the video leave a like if you did do subscribe and I will hopefully see you guys next time Goodbye.